So women believe, oh my God, I'm 30. You know, my hairdresser, when she was at 29, people said to her, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Your 30th birthday is tomorrow. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, today I was 29. Now I'm 30, but my eggs just suddenly shriveled up or 35. Remember that the assisted reproductive technology world makes a freaking fortune. They work by keeping women terrified that they won't be able to have a baby instead of women's power. So then what happens is you realize that this body, we turn over every cell in our body every seven years, or it takes seven years for all of them. So you get a new body every seven years. Mm -hmm. Now you can have an entirely new body if you change the script that you're feeding the cells and your body listens to every word. So don't let your age become a cage because what is sex with a woman? It is the man's chance to plug into life force. Hallo Herz, schön, dass du eingeschaltet hast. Ich bin Nadine Gerhard und dieser Podcast ist mein absolutes Herzensprojekt, um dich zu inspirieren auf deinem ganz individuellen Weg zu mehr Fülle, Liebe und Lebensfreude. Hallo du Wunder, ich freue mich total, dass du heute eingeschaltet hast und dir diese Folge anhören möchtest. Heute habe ich keine geringe als eine der weltweit führendsten Frauengesundheitsexpertin und mehrfache New York Times Bestseller Autorin Dr. Christiane Northrup zu Gast. Sie ist staatlich geprüfte Gynäkologin für Geburtshilfe und Gynäkologie mit über 25 Jahren Praxiserfahrung. Und diese Frau ist... Wow, 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 wow. Also ich bin sowas von begeistert. So viel klare Worte, so viel Weiblichkeit, so viel Mut. Nicht umsonst wurde sie zu den 100 vertrauenswürdigsten Menschen Amerikas gewählt. Oprah Winfrey hat sie zu den Super Soul 100 gekürt. Menschen, die die Welt verändern. Und mit ihr spreche ich heute darüber, wie sich die weibliche Kraft ausdrückt. Wie kann die weibliche Kraft im weiblichen Körper Heilung finden? Warum haben viele Frauen Frauen Angst vor dem Älterwerden? Woher kommt PMS und wie heile ich es? Wir sprechen über die Schönheit der Sexualität, über den weiblichen Menstruationszyklus, darüber, warum du weder über dein Alter sprechen noch nachdenken solltest. Wir sprechen über das Thema Kinderwunsch mit 30 und 40 Jahren aufwärts und das wird sehr, sehr spannend. Und wir sprechen über das kollektive Gedankenkonstrukt und wie es auf uns Einfluss hat. Und so viel Spannendes mehr. I celebrate you because you are one of the few medical professionals who encourage women to find out the root of the disease. Yes. And, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and you pass on that every disease contains a message and that the body should not be judged for it. That's yes. exactly right. And I know that your platform is very much the German New Medicine. And I remember when I first read about it, I thought, well, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything in the body is biosymbolic. Mm -hmm. Biosymbolic. So in my own life and in my practice for years, what I would do with women is always see if we could get to the root. Now, here's where people stop dead mm -hmm. and they go, well, I didn't cause this. I'm not to blame. And that's an old paradigm. That is the, uh, it's a transactional analysis triangle from the 1970s. Okay. So it's victim, persecutor, rescuer, victim, persecutor, rescuer. And what I say to people, that's the Bermuda Triangle of health. You will never get out of that. If you stick with that, always running for the victim position or running for the rescue uh, position mm -hmm. or becoming the abuser, you'll never heal. You'll never heal because healing is not there in that triangle. It is understanding that there is a part of you that is not conscious to your intellect, that's running the show. And usually, usually it's an unhealed little child self. Mm -hmm. Eckhart Tolle would call it uh, the pain body, a yeah. semi-autonomous 
part of ourselves that feeds on drama and fear and anger. Mm -hmm. And so our job is to recognize this. And I always do, no matter what has happened to me ever. And I'm talking about all kinds of things that I write about, you know, a big fibroid tumor, that big, a breast abscess, mm -hmm. nearly going blind in the left eye. I mean, it's not like I haven't had an opportunity to practice what I preach. Mm -hmm. So everything that happens, including once I didn't want to go to a New Year's Eve party. And I was wondering, you know, my mind was saying, oh, I should, they want me to come and blah, 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 all that. And I was filling the wood stove and a piece of wood, literally, it, you couldn't have, I couldn't have done this on purpose if I tried, piece of wood literally almost leaps out of my hand and breaks the second toe on the left foot. Mm -hmm. Just very precise. It's a big piece of wood. So that's, and it's a little toe. And um, I have a, a person that I work with and she said, well, I, I think she said, one of, the, one of the sides, I know the left side is the feminine, the mother, and the right side is the masculine and the father. And um, <clears throat> hands are present life, feet are past life. Anyway, what it was, was I was trying to please the woman who was having the party, but it was really a little child part of me trying to please something in my mother. And when you go through life that way, um, you have power. You have the actual power to heal something mm. because you're not, you understand that it happened. You need compassion. You need a witness to say this never should have happened. I mean, many things happen to children that are not okay. I mean, mm. let's just talk about one of the crimes against humanity that I carried out personally, and that was infant circumcision. Mm. <clears throat> With no anesthesia, strap the little boy down on a circumstraint like being, you know, crucified and then cut off 40,000 nerve endings. I mean, at least they don't do that in your country. The United mm -hmm. States hasn't quite figured that out. Although we're down to just 60% of males instead of 90%, which is mm -hmm. what was going on when I was doing it. So, and to th see, and what we believe as doctors, I was told, oh, you know, they don't feel it. Oh, really? Because this very calm little boy was just fine until I started to cut this part of his body. And then the cries were heart-wrenching, the kind of cries where the child can't even get their breath. And then, you know, my doctor colleagues, well, you know, he can't feel it and he won't remember it, but the body remembers all of it. Yes, yes. So true, so true. I I uh, I celebrate you always because your books are amazing. It's a Bible here. Uh, women's body, women's wisdom is a Bible for all women out there, and they should read it. Really, it's a uh, and your website with all the information. I'm so so thankful for your work, uh, for your being, and yeah. My first of uh, first question is. Um, How is the feminine power expressed in your eyes? Oh, the feminine power is the power of receiving. Mm -hmm. If we just look at the anatomy of the female body. Mm -hmm. So the vagina receives the seed. The, the um, breast receives the, the child. Mm -hmm. And if you have any pets, They are always in the part of the kitchen right where you're preparing the meal. It's like they, they need to be right there. And when you, if you have a little kid and you're taking a bath, they're in the bathroom. They just have to be there with this nurturing feminine energy. Mm -hmm. So, and this nurturing feminine energy has been exploited and taken advantage of and made to feel less than, but actually it is the feminine energy that has the actual power. So I want to give you an example of that. Yes, please. Um, uh, one, of, um, one of my friends said to her husband, if you get that uh, experimental shot that's going around, I will never have sex with you again. And uh, because she didn't want whatever might be transmitted into her precious body. 
that is power. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. Um, and when I had uh, my children, I was married at the time to an orthopedic surgeon. And I said, uh, if we ever have a son, you will have to drill through my body to circumcise him. It will never happen. Uh, it's it, the feminine power, which we need to see, I think we are actually seeing more rising up on the planet is to say, no, no, we are here. We are the creators of life. And you don't have to have a baby to be creating life. We do the, the um, birthdays and the decoration and the creating beauty and creating comfort. It's, and that ability mm -hmm. brings us pleasure. I mean, I love having in my refrigerator the foods that I know my guests will love. It's, it is a source of pleasure, just like um, with breastfeeding your child is a source of pleasure. However, if you are not replenished, if you don't have time as in nature to rest and restore, you are giving from an empty vessel and way too many women are giving from an empty vessel because what we have to do as women is we have to say, no, I'm not available for that. And then what happens is people begin to respect your boundaries and they value what you value. Now, one of the things, and I don't know what's going on in your country, but in the United States, we've had for the past generation, what we call the hookup culture, mm -hmm. where um, young people in college go to a party, they drink, they go back to the dorm room and have sex, which they call hooking up. What? So all of the all of the beauty, the spiritual communion that sex is supposed to be, it just becomes um, like having another beer or eating a donut. Well, what I hear now from the people who are like 15, 17 and so on. Mm -hmm. The hookup culture is over. They don't even have any uh, libido. They just, they're all friends. They're like cuddling like puppies. And I really believe that what we're headed for right now on the planet is a generation that doesn't procreate, that doesn't have children. Now there will always be pockets because nature always finds a way. But if women, so imagine if, you know, if I were in college at this point and someone, you know, just wanted to have a hookup, I'd say, get out of here because what women need to do, and we have sold ourselves out starting by the way, with the sexual revolution of the sixties and seventies. And I was a young resident in OBGYN in the seventies, eighties. And I saw I was down at the other end of the table and I saw the results of free love and the sexual revolution and women got screwed. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have bought the narrative that our worth comes from how pleasing we can be to men when the truth is the opposite. It is the opposite men I'm not talking about narcissists. It's about one in five, by the way. So that's mm -hmm. bad men. They're, they're stuck emotionally at the age of 12 and you can never please them. And they're the ones that want a woman who's 20 years younger. I, not those men. Mm -hmm. Good men, 80%, maybe 90, want to please women. And you can tell how much a man loves you by how much he wants to do for you. So we women, Pat Allen is a marriage and family therapist in her 80s out in Orange County, California. And I love Pat's work. And she says, there are more women with penises and more men with vaginas than ever before in human history. And we do know, by the way, that the sperm count has plummeted in the last 60 years. We have a kind of a anti-life culture. Mm -hmm. where we put up with GMO crops, pesticides, poisoning of the air and the water. It's kind of a war 
on the feminine. Oh, yeah. Because we're the ones who protect life. Mm -hmm. And now, this is interesting, you know, we had the Me Too movement. And, and I say in both of my revisions of these books, um, these are the post Me Too versions. These are, um, and Me Too was a very good movement, but it has been co opted because um, now it's, uh, as one of my friends who works with me in Millions Against Medical Mandates, that group, uh, she says, now it's Me Too, but not you. So we're now at this, this now moment, we're seeing women all over the planet with menstrual problems. And the menstrual cycle is our primary connection with creativity, with the phases of the moon, with the tides and all of that. Well, suddenly when you see women all over the planet uh, and including by the way, case reports of 16 month old baby girls passing clots Houston, we have a problem. This is literally, I think, an enormous wake up call now for women to say, we're not having it. And the first way that you say we're not having it is you say to the men in your life, if you get that experimental biologic weapon injected into you, I will not have sex with you. Because what is sex with a woman? It is the man's chance to plug into life force, life force. And good men actually are more interested in pleasing a woman than they are their own pleasure. So you can always tell a good man he wants to please you and we women, the ones with the testosterone levels need to learn how to receive. And I personally learned this lesson very, very well when I learned Argentine tango. Um, obviously with COVID, we haven't had any dances in a while. I do hear, by the way, that the tango in Berlin is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Yeah. So that's, and that is the uh, tango is a dance of masculine and feminine. And of course, you know, two women, two men can do that. That's fine. Um, but the leader is surfing a wave and the feminine follower is the wave, but he's mm -hmm. surfing it to know what it is she, he must do and how to please her. And it's a very, it's like a martial art. And that's how we want to live our lives. And I have to say, after all my, you know, medical training and being a warrior out there, um, when I first met a carpenter, after, after um, I went through a divorce and I didn't know that men wanted to please you because the, you know, the one I was married to um, was not in that category. And my role in that is I probably didn't let him. So let me be clear because I, you know, I'm not gonna run for the victim place here. But when I met <laughs> men who wanted to, to please me, like they would get the job done. A, a tree fell on my roof of the garage and I'd never had anyone, any carpenter who actually came, got the job done, did it well and finished the job. And then I began to attract men because I was suddenly, I had a new lens as it were. I also feng shui the whole yard and found out that I had a lamppost that was down. The, the lamppost literally was lying on the ground in the helpful people um, helpful people and travel area of the what the feng shui bagua of my property. So I put up a new lamppost and then things began to change. Now, in a way, this is like the German new medicine, uh, but, but um, as above, so below, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, Hermes Trismegistus. Um, so when you change inside or you change something outside that affects you, then everything changes. It's all symbolic and it's so fun to live that way instead of okay here's what women do oh i'm having hot flashes and i've got vaginal dryness and my sex life is over and 
you know, the best, my best years are behind me and nothing could be further from the truth. The best years, I mean, okay, the science is this, women in their 60s and 70s are having the best sex of their lives, probably by then because they have learned to, they've learned to allow somebody to, um, that's my cat. Tail there. <laughs> How sweet is it? <laughs> Hello, kitty. You know, she comes in, I'll show you her. This is, this is Tess. She's oh. a, Siberian. Oh, um, that's yeah. a beautiful one. Yeah, wow. Is, she's lovely, but she's a, she's a rascal. Okay. <laughs> With a lot of hair. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but you know, they don't really shed. It's interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's not like a Persian, you know, mm -hmm. or a Himalayan. Whoa, hairball mm -hmm. central. Anyhow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another thing, the cats are feminine, dogs are masculine. And after my divorce, you know, I, I got two cats from the shelter. And, <laughs> yeah, um, and I thought, oh my goodness, these pets are really, this is very healing. I mean, mm -hmm. women really love their pets. And it's, you know, they're very therapeutic. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, you know, when, when you're, I think my karma was head down, get the degrees, get the degrees from institutions that nobody can refute, right? Like I think, I, I feel always like I've had lifetimes of being burned at the stake and all of that. And I, you know, I'm sure you, your viewers can relate. Only now we're rising, we're rising all over the planet. Oh, and the other thing, women are supporting each other in generally speaking, like my female friendships are better than they've ever been. And we're at the time, I'm not sure if this is happening in Germany. I'm certain it is from the news things that I read. We're at the great bifurcation. We're separating the wheat from the chaff. Mm -hmm. So you're, so we're finding our true soul tribe. And this would be the people who are drawn to mm -hmm. German new medicine. I remember when my colleague, Dr. Kelly Brogan, a holistic psychiatrist um, who teaches women how to get off psych meds and just use you know, diet and, and this sort of thing. And I remember when she discovered German new medicine, you know, and it was like the perfect thing for her practice because mm -hmm. it is, it is uh, empowering, empowering. What does that mean? It's you're calling back your power to affect change, you're stepping out of the victim role. And yes, 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 you have been a victim if you've been sexually abused, if you've been raped, it's one in three women mm -hmm. all over the world. But then when you finally rise up and say, we're done, we are done and I value this, I value my body. And so therefore I'm gonna put in beautiful food. I'm going to stand on the earth. I am going to get sunlight. I'm going to um, maybe have a little garden, at least grow herbs. I'm part of the earth. And therefore, I will be an inspiration to others because I am. And here's the other thing that I believe. People like you have enormous light. Truth is light. Mm, yeah. And when we speak the truth, when we dare to have a platform where we're sending the truth out into the entire world, we literally become air purifiers. Our message goes out and it purifies. But let me be very clear, in someone who's holding a lot of darkness and victim consciousness, they can't stand it. So I want to be very clear that it doesn't mean everyone's going to love you. Um, that, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you too. I know it too. <laughs> oh, oh, at this point, I am right in the crosshairs of the mainstream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, but to me, because after all these years, you know, I think to myself, there's, there's no power there. Why, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. In fact, why would anyone get their power from doing a character assassination on someone like me, who's mm -hmm. done nothing but serve women and the feminine for decades. Well, yeah. why, but why would, why would you do that? What's, what's, <laughs> you know, if you can't, 
if you can't refute the principles and the science, what typically happens is they begin to do a character assassination, mm -hmm. you know, um, because if you think about it and the tenets of uh, German new medicine, okay, you, you are like this because of some trauma that changed your brain and your body and you have the ability to heal this. Well, who can make a fortune on that? Mm -hmm. We have in, uh, in medicine, Western medicine as it's been practiced and quite frankly, I think it's on its death, it's its death rattle at this point. Um, because their, their goal is to get everyone on prescription medications mm. from cradle to grave. And now in the United States, 54% of children have a chronic illness, 54% of children. And, uh, and now we're just injecting them with more and more toxins, more and more poisons. And again, I don't know if this is happening in Germany, but I have been horrified uh, in the United States that pregnant women all, now it's the standard that pregnant women are given a flu shot and a DPT shot in the second trimester. And yet they're afraid of eating fish because of the mercury in the fish. It's like, please, <laughs> please, have you looked at what's in that shot? <laughs> it's, it's really strange. It's, I don't know. I don't have really words for it because, but it's uh, the big separation, the manipulations, a big separation. And so our work, it's so important. And that's what I always feel if I get some hard words from others or something, it's like, okay, our work is so important and it's the pain of, of the people who comes out. Yes. yes. So that's why I always say to me, okay, it's yours, it's not mine. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly right. Because, um, you know, Robert Fritchie, who runs the World Service Institute and uh, teaches healing with divine love, he taught me that um, divine love is a toxin to toxic people. And he tells the story of being in a uh, Qigong uh, dojo. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy who was really abusive to the people learning and especially children. And so Bob went in and he's a Qigong master and he just literally put his hand up to send divine love to this guy. And he literally fell into the back wall. Whoa. So we need to remember that our light, our love, our compassion is power. Mm -hmm. And if you are a toxic person and you are working for the dark forces, you won't like it. And so here's how I know we're winning and the feminine and the earth is being reborn and we have regenerative agriculture and all that the mainstream media would not be spending so much time on the attack. Like, I mean, really, it's, it's actually amusing to me because as my friend Kevin Jenkins of the Urban Global Health Alliance, Kevin uh, just says, you got to put on your God courage now your God courage. And last night we had a, a meeting at my house and someone said, just send up your God rod. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think that what you're about, what I'm about is helping people have the courage to stand in their truth, to understand that everything is biosymbolic and that right now the earth herself is going through a rebirth and having attended so many births, physical births, mm -hmm. um, I understand midwifing a long, hard labor. Mm -hmm. And I would say we've been at about nine centimeters for quite a while now, you know, which is the transition time when you want, the woman wants to leave. It's like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore, <laughs> but you're stuck. You're stuck. Yes. And it's almost time to push. Mm -hmm. It's almost time. Okay, good. We're almost there. Now you push. Yeah. yeah. It's like winter and summertime right now. And the, um, yeah, but the green is coming. You, you feel it, you know it, and you need to go. That's yeah. it. 
That's yeah. it. And we must remember the power of our imagination. I follow a spiritual teacher in England named uh, Michelle Fielding. I love her work. Mm -hmm. She said, right now we're at 55% um, light on the planet in humanity. We need to get to 60%. That's not much. That's only 5%. And so we humans have the ability to do that with what we pay attention to, our thoughts, our emotions. So you, you go with what... Um, what brings you joy, pleasure, sustainable pleasure? I'm not talking about drinking and you know too much chocolate cake. Um, and we can easily, easily reach the tipping point. Your neighbor might be five, five percent. You might be a hundred percent. But if your neighbor has a revelatory dream, and like my group on, on Facebook, we would share our, our dreams. And many, many people were having the same kind of dreams that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something wonderful is coming. Then a, a dream that you wake up from, you know, in the middle of the night um, can increase your vibration. Or if we, do, if we do those global meditations, I met a woman last night, a meteorologist. She follows the Schumann resonance. And the Schumann resonance is the electromagnetic field of the earth that is connected to human emotion. Mm -hmm. And she said the Schumann resonance is now off the charts. It's higher than it's ever been because we humans are bringing in more light. But please remember, mm -hmm. truth is light. And truth has been the enemy of darkness for centuries, mm -hmm. centuries. And I think we're you know, we're about to see the, the tipping point and our imagination is very powerful. So we want to spend time every day, um, maybe listing five things right this very minute that you love about your life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love is that since last year, since March of 2020, I have met the global leaders of the new earth that's being born. And we've all found each other the way the real internet works. It's like this uh, vibratory um, thing where like attracts like. So I'm on a, uh, a mastermind with Andy Kaufman, who I had never met, you know, Tom Cowan, Sherry Tenpenny, um, Lee Dundas, a human rights lawyer out of uh, Los Angeles, James Grunvig, an investigative reporter out of New York who does deep dives into things that have been controlling humanity, but he also mm -hmm. has a uh, vaccine injured nonverbal son who's 20. Mm -hmm. So he works with us in millions against medical mandates. It's as though it's as here's the way I see it. We all came to be here right now and to hold the sword of truth, but not to do it alone. I think we've had a lot of stuff on planet earth where it was, you know, like one person. Mm -hmm. Now it's a whole light army of yes. so many of us. Don't you feel that? You're meeting these yeah. people from all over the world that we never ever mm -hmm. would have met before. We do our little thing. I do my women's health stuff and the natural hormones and the herbs. And, you know, that's all great. I've done that work forever, but this is taking it to another level because we're birthing a new way of living together. And, you know, and I know that the, the tyranny will not stand. It mm -hmm. will not stand. I mean, they've repeated it over and over and over same playbook um, in Germany, you certainly know what that playbook is. Yeah. Um, and it's not going to stand because the, the light is getting lighter. So the dark is getting dark. Yeah. Beautiful words. Hmm. How can the female power find healing in the female body? First by, uh, checking your thoughts mm -hmm. about your body. So what have you been taught? What has been the legacy? What is the, uh, the current script running in your head? Okay. So have you been taught that as a woman, it is your lot in life to suffer 
you know, um, men work from sun to sun, but women's work is never done, you know, that, that, that sort of uh, thing, um, that the menstrual period is a curse and that you're designed for cramping and all of that stuff, um, that your moods are all about your hormones and your hormones are victimizing you. Okay, so all of those myths, all of which have, have been handed down to us for, for centuries. I mean, I had an ancient text, you know, Pliny the Elder, I'm, it's in Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, said, you know, nothing is more toxic than the, you know, than the menstrual blood of women, you know, just um, all the places that are the most holy, the most sacred are the ones that we've been taught are cause for suffering. So it's a, it's a reverse of what is true. Mm -hmm. So we're taught that once you reach menopause and you're no longer a reproductive unit, uh, therefore you're useless and there's nothing to be gained from you. But, but here's, I want to give you an exact opposite of what's really true. The FSHLH in the brain follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone that are created by the brain to go down to the ovary and say, hey, time to have an egg. So that they're only high at ovulation like this. And uh, there's a peak FSHLH and a testosterone peak. And then you ovulate and then you move into what's called the luteal phase. Well. Mm -hmm. At ovulation, and any women can relate to this, when she is ovulating, very often her libido is at the highest, but it's more than that. It's more than sex. It is uh, that she is maximally open to cross-pollination, um, very, very receptive. And it's interesting that she also puts out a pheromone that uh, is a sex attractant chemical. And women report, you know, they'll be walking by a construction site and just come from a yoga class and no makeup and the hair's a mess and the guys are, you know, they can, it, we're mammals, you can, you can feel that. Well, take that one step further. That is you, a superpower of being maximally receptive. Well, that FSHLH peak like this stays up at the ovulatory level for the rest of your life after mm -hmm. menopause. So that magic that we had just at ovulation for like three days, is now boop, that's now in your brain for the rest of your life. Meaning you are now so creative. Women are dreaming up businesses. It's like, uh, but, but here's the thing. You cannot get this power I'm talking about unless you're taking care of your body. So what Western medicine would have you believe is that after the age of 50, you need yearly mammograms, you need colonoscopies, it's the beginning of the end. Well, it is true. If you keep doing what you've always done, you will get cellular inflammation and you'll get osteoporosis and heart disease and breast cancer and colon cancer and all the rest of it. What you wanna do to get the power in the female body is you say, I'm not having it. That, uh, that's not, that's not gonna apply to me. So yeah. I, would, I would stay away from conventional doctors entirely. I, I never go, I never have, I don't have a chart in there. You know, I just don't do it. Um, so then what happens is you realize that this body, we turn over every cell in our body every seven years or it takes seven years for all of them. So you get a new body every seven years. Mm -hmm. Now you can have an entirely new body if you change the script that you're feeding the cells and your body listens to every word. So you decide during perimenopause when you're having hot flashes and the periods are maybe getting weird and all of that and, and every bit of unjust stuff from your past is coming up and hitting you between the eyes. Okay. Um, so you just decide, all right, now it's my time. I'm going to reinvent myself. As I say in women, uh, the wisdom of menopause, we are at grow or die, just like we are on the planet right now, grow or die. Yes. You got to take responsibility for yourself and realize you can be stronger, you can be more sensual, you can be happier than you've ever been before. That power is at your fingertips, but it will not happen if every one of your friends 
is always talking about the illness that they're having, the prescription drugs they're on, the doctors they've been running to. I mean, there are women having these deadening, life deadening conversations all the time. It is a health risk to be around that energy. It's a health risk. Now you don't have to throw them to the curb. You can see if you can bring the conversation around, you know, like you mm -hmm. can say, um, what is the most favorite thing that happened to you today so far? You know, just bring it around. You have the ability where all of this lands is your ability to think a different thought. It literally starts with thinking a different thought and thoughts are accompanied by a cascade of metabolic chemicals in the body. Every thought we think is a biochemical reality in the body. Now that does not mean, oh, everything is light and love and butterflies. <laughs> you don't recreate yourself without some effort. It's like um, recently, I started to work with a trainer with weight training. And he told me, okay, what you need to do every single day is this thing called, he says, it's jungle 30. All right. So that's three sets of 10 squats, push ups, sit ups. I thought that is so military. You know, I do Pilates, yoga, but you know, not squats, push ups, and sit ups. But if you do them with perfect form, here's what happens especially the squats. And this is really important for women. You get better and better and better, and it changes your entire pelvic floor. But at first it is uncomfortable because when was the last time you squatted down like a two-year-old? Like for me, a long time ago. I can crawl around on the rug with my grandchildren, no problem. Yeah. But the squat really needed work and to do it, I had to like, you know, dig my heels in, push my knees out and then stay, this is important, stay in that place mm -hmm. of some discomfort, not pain, some discomfort. All growth comes from that, just that leading edge, leading edge of some discomfort, but not pain. Mm -hmm. And then you just repeat the next day and the next day and the next day. And it's amazing to me how much you improve. And so what I never do is I never say, this is the thing that goes through the culture. Well, at my age, it's too late to, you know, it's too late to learn a language, learn weight training, learn how to dance, um, travel on my own, drive at night, you know, any of those things. So don't let your age become a cage. In fact, what I say to women in, in my book, Goddesses Never Age, just don't give your age anymore. I mean, I, uh, for a, this is interesting because we learn also by morphogenic fields. Uh, Rupert Sheldrake, the British biologist, talks about morphogenic fields mm -hmm. and how um, when a human does something that others haven't done yet, first they tell you it's impossible, like Roger Bannister running the four minute mile after being told he'd never walk again. But as soon as he ran the four minute mile, which they said you couldn't do, everyone all over the planet was running the four minute mile. So those of us who are on the leading edge of this, you know, like I just decided um, after I had written the wisdom of menopause and all that, I just decided I am not, I am not going to go down this path of the divorced po postmenopausal women, women living at home alone with cats. Like I'm not, I'm not going to do that thing. So how how can I make that not my reality? Well, it starts with deciding that your age doesn't apply to you because chronologic age and biologic age are entirely different. I have this bathroom scale, I did a fast and so I wanted to see what percentage of body weight, percentage of water in the body was and all that. It gives you your metabolic age. Mine is 29. Whoa. So, <laughs> uh, so you know, it, it changes, sometimes yeah. it's 32, um, <laughs> but that's what we have to remember. And all those machines in the gym, um, you know, where you put in your, your age, mm -hmm. well, if you put in your age and it's in a rather advanced age, the amount of work that you're gonna do is 
programmed into the machine to be less. And like, why do you want to do that? Then to me, that's planned obsolescence. So I've been putting 40 in all the gym things mm -hmm. forever, forever. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, I, uh, talked to a friend of mine and she had a, she had a, an aunt who was like a legendary mm -hmm. and she said, um, well, this aunt's secret weapon was that she never got older than 33. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like she was never older than 33. And I've told That's my perfect. daughter, okay, after 33, you never give your age again. No, yeah, you okay. have to go get the driver's license renewed and all that. But, and I tell my friends, by the way, don't tell me your age. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what's the number at this birthday. I mm -hmm. don't have milestone birthdays. Oh, you know, you're 50. Oh, you're 60. You're 70. Mm -hmm. oh, those are millstones. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Now I celebrate my birthday big time. I love it. That's your solar return and it's sun conjunct yeah. sun, but putting an age to it. No. And what's interesting is after I wrote goddesses never age, I had all kinds of people. Well, I'm proud of at this age I can do, and I'm proud of, and I don't see why, are you afraid of your age? And it's like, they didn't get it. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I don't want my body to know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into the collective morphogenic field of what 50 is supposed yeah. to look like, what 60 is supposed to look like, what 70 is supposed to look. I don't want to get into it. So therefore, I don't want my body to know. And I don't want to know your age because I'm as susceptible to putting someone in a box because of their age. Yes. As anybody. I don't want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Could you please tell us um, something about women when a woman is over 30 and wants a baby? It's like all doctors say, oh, now you need to go. You need to do it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. I just had uh, a podcast with Dr. Maritza Snyder, who mm -hmm. has written a book about essential oils for menopause. And at the age of 38, she decided that what she wanted to do was take a year to prepare her body for pregnancy. She had Hashimoto's thyroiditis and she needed to change her diet. And so she just took a year at 38 to prepare. And then when she wanted to get pregnant, She got pregnant like almost immediately. And uh, I think at the age of 40, and I remember doing a uh, ceremony with one of my friends at the age of 39, 40, she was getting married and she wanted her IUD removed. And so we did a whole ritual about bringing in a soul and, and all of that. And uh, she got married and was pregnant immediately because she never ever bought it, you know i i did my training in a catholic hospital irish catholic mm -hmm. those women were having a baby every single year until they were like 50 so we would have to do in some of them cesarean hysterectomies so they'd stop having babies because we weren't allowed to do tubal ligations that group um that was the morphogenic field around being an irish catholic woman in boston at that time which mm -hmm. is you are just going to be pregnant all the time. You know, you're going to have these large families of six and seven, even if they didn't want to, and we weren't allowed to do any, you know, no contraception. So now we've got the opposite where women have, uh, you know, they're not getting married when they're 21 or 19 mm -hmm. and they're delaying childbearing and all that time they're not thinking of their womb and their body as this soil that you've got to prepare. But if you do think of it, there's all kinds of ways to extend your reproductive life. I had patients, you know, I remember a woman age 52 comes in, she thought she was in menopause. She had a lot of weight in the middle area of her body. She was pregnant. She was six months pregnant, didn't even know it. No, that's the mind body split, okay but she had a perfectly normal baby. Another friend I just heard of just had completely normal twins conceived on her own age 48. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is get, again, get out of that cultural portal because cultural portals are far more impactful in our biology than our, our belief system is unbelievably powerful. So women believe 
oh my God, I'm 30. You know, my hairdresser, when she was at 29, people said to her, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Your 30th birthday is tomorrow. Like, oh, really? Okay. Today I was 29. Now I'm 30, but my eggs just suddenly shriveled up or 35. Remember that the assisted reproductive technology world makes a freaking fortune. They work by keeping women terrified that they won't be able to have a baby instead of women's power. What we talked about this body is made by God to create. I met, I haven't thought of this for a while. I met a shaman way back named Brant Secunda. He was originally from Queens, New York, if you could believe it. And he was very into uh, marijuana. And he was, this is like before the internet and all that. And he said, he was looking about cannabis and it says, see Quichol. And he said, so I went to see him. And the Huichols are a very remote tribe in the mountains of Northern Mexico, where the Tarahumara are. And he died on the way, but they, they picked him up. He was almost dead. And they said, yeah, we knew you were coming. You know, we, we got the memo that you were coming. And then he lived with them for, I don't know, 18 years. And he said, the women had babies in their 50s and 60s because nobody told them that their eggs were old. And the belief system of the culture was that conceiving a child, having a child was something that the tribe supported utterly, utterly. And so they supported all pregnant women and it was seen as a divine act and they took care of them. So what I know, we also, by the way, we have experiments from MIT showing that mice, mammals, can create new eggs. You know, we're all told that you have the most eggs you'll ever have is a 20 week uh, fetus. And then you start to lose the eggs and you know, by 35, that's the end of it. Well, that's not true. So I think we need to remember the miracle that is this human body. And we have um, evidence of spontaneous remission from all known diseases, ALS, all of them, all of them. And uh, so the deal is you, you need to study what those people did. Uh, the book Radical Remission talks a lot about that. Mm -hmm. And of course, German New Medicine, case after case after case, mm -hmm. where the person realized what it, what it was and was ready to own their power, like own this female power. What, what I do is I always think about um, my best years are all ahead. I always feel like my best years are all ahead. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. I got goosebumps because, yeah, no doctor say this to you, but it's so, I feel it's so true. That's the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Women, this has been my biggest success. I write this stuff. I talk to women about it and they say, just like you, I knew this. Mm -hmm. I knew this, but I never heard a doctor say it. Mm -hmm. So then what that does, because I've had all the training at Dartmouth Medical School, Tufts New England Medical Center, board certified, all of that with an MD degree and a professor and all of it. If I'm saying that, then my path to work and walk in that system, I then can give women back their power by saying, there's nothing over here that you need. It's all in here. It's all yeah. in here. But I know because I'm an insider. Mm -hmm. So I know how yeah. this works over here. And I love the good parts of it. Mm -hmm. If you're bleeding to death, it works great. Mm -hmm. But other for daily life, no, no, no. They'll just take your power away. Mm -hmm. And they keep inserting doubt. Well, and it could be this inserting of doubt is so lethal. Mm -hmm. So I just don't even go. And they feed fear. And oh, that's yeah. a big theme. It's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. We need to remember something. The dark forces feed on fear. It's a food source. Yes. I, I'm a fan of Barbara Marciniak's book, Bringers of the Dawn. And she talks about um, the food source mm -hmm. of, she calls them lizards. I think the lizards is good. Um, fear and anger. Mm -hmm. So don't feed them. Mm -hmm. So yes, at first, righteous anger 
is a source of power. It's a source of health. It is a, it is a um, cause of health, righteous anger, but you don't want to stay there. Mm. I mean, when we wake up to what's been done to women, to the feminine in men, when we wake up to that, then it is normal to have righteous anger. It is normal when you realize what you've been talked into against your better judgment. Yes, you should be angry, but you don't want to stay there. Like the whole medical system, medical insurance, all of that. I've known how ridiculous that was for years. And um, when someone finds out, well, that shouldn't be that way. No, it shouldn't, but it is. So you're either going to fight that. Okay, like I want to give you an example. So right now we have so many people leaving the school system and homeschooling their children because they don't like what the children are being taught and the, the um, indoctrination, or they don't like the fact that the kid needs 18 different toxic shots to go to school. So you can either spend your time fighting the mainstream system with the teachers, with the legislature, with the government, or you can get on with What's the curriculum I'm going to use? I'm going to keep my kids at home. Wow, I'm noticing that they're happier and healthier. Now, there's no one right answer to that. Some people were born to um, confront the school system and all of these, these parents in Vail, Colorado, all got together and managed to get the mask mandate removed from the school. So you can do that. Plus, it's fun. It's fun to work with other people and do this work. But you got to keep it fun. Because the minute you get into victim again, then there's no power. Then there's yeah. no power. So you have to see yourself as more powerful than them. Because anyone who's using control for power, that's not power. That's not power. Yes, 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 yes. You no, know, it's like, uh, let me give you control. A friend of mine had a girlfriend and she said, if he left her, she would commit suicide. And he actually married her. Okay, to me, I'd say, go ahead. Can I bring you a gun? How would you like to do it? I mean, I'm serious here. That's just control and manipulation. Mm -hmm. Any woman's, oh, you're, or, you know, my daughter had all these friends in college, um, Asian friends, and their parents said, if they dated someone who wasn't age Asian, their aunt back in Vietnam or China or whatever, would become so depressed, she'd have to go on antidepressants. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead and be on uh, antidepressants. Mm -hmm. This is my life. This is the man I choose to be with. Yes. But the pressure, okay, we've got to remember the pressure of the collective, of, the, of your personal tribe is enormous. And right now, each of us is being asked to find each other the people, uh, I had a meeting at my house um, very recently. And uh, so we're, you know, we're kind of a, just a medical freedom group and uh, helping each other with organic farming and, you know, all of that. And, and we had a couple people who were new and they said, oh my goodness, this feels so good to be in a group of like-minded people. I've been essentially alone thinking I was the only one thinking this for the last year. So remember, all tribes wound their members in three ways. This is the work of Dr. Mario Martinez. Um, shame, abandonment, betrayal. If you step out of line, um, and that's what the dark forces have used. Oh, you know, cover your face so that you can't breathe oxygen to protect this person. What? What? You need to get a biologic experimental thing injected into you that has 50 billion molecules of a synthetic protein. You need to do that to protect me. This is, uh, this is what they do. So that's shaming, yeah. shaming. And it's, and it feels terrible it, because shame means you are a mistake. It means, you know, where yes. you're going to be banished from the tribe and you will be abandoned. You can't come and see your grandchildren unless you get this thing. Okay, and then betrayal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are painful things and that's, those are what's used to control. 
But then you find your own group. If you listen to your podcast, you listen to me, you do my Telegram channel, you read one of my books. And little by little by little by little, you remember who you are. You remember what your power is. And then you try it out. Like that squat, a little lower next time. A little uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but we did it. Like just taking your mask off to go into a store. Or I do this at airports. Just take the mask off, see how long it takes before someone says something. <laughs> Oh, okay. I have it right here. <laughs> it will be very interesting the next weeks, months, and years. <laughs> it, will. it will. And yeah. we all decided to come here at the same time mm -hmm. so that we could support each other. My last question. For many people, health means the functioning of the body. And the only thing that matters is symptom elimination. What does female health mean to you? Female health means to me taking every symptom as guidance mm. that there's some course correction that is necessary. So if you have PMS, premenstrual syndrome, I can guarantee you that there's something off with your diet or your relationships or your thoughts. Women are not meant to suffer through the most fundamental cycle that brings life to the earth. So use that symptom as a guidepost. And I personally had terrible menstrual cramps and had to you know, sometimes uh, sign out of surgery and have someone else complete the surgery. So I understand, I understand. It's not, you know, so what you wanna do, because if someone says, well, you know, just go on birth control pills, right? Well, that what that's like is putting duct tape over the instrument panel on your car. So that's what most medicine does. We're just, you know, can't, can't you give me a pill? Well, yeah, you can get on birth control pills and then you will never know that guidance system that is your menstrual cycle will shut that right down and you never have to think about it. But here's the thing, the bill will always come due. The body never lies and the bill will always come due. So it would be prudent to begin to pay attention before you're bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful. And you said uh, my next two questions are on this. You said it already. So perfect. <laughs> um, my very last question. If you had the opportunity to wave a magic wand and wish something for the world, what would it be? That we would wake up to the glory and the beauty of the human who is the steward of nature mm -hmm. and animals and water, and that we would walk on the planet as divine beings connected to God in the Garden of Eden, and we would know it. Thank you so, so much for this amazing interview. Thank you so, so much for this amazing interview. War das ein wertvolles Gespräch mit Christian Northrup? Ich bin so, so, so dankbar für all ihre Worte, für ihr Sein, für ihr Tun, für ihr, ja, alles, was sie in die Welt hinausgibt. Allein ihre Website, da sind so viele Informationen, die so hilfreich sind für alle Frauen auf dieser Welt. Ich habe all ihre Bücher, also zumindest ein Auszug ihrer Bücher, sie hat ja viele Bücher geschrieben. Ich habe ihre Website, ich habe ihre ganzen Social Media Kontaktdaten in die Show Notes gesetzt. Du findest auch alle Links zu den Kollegen und Kolleginnen, die sie genannt hat, sowie auch hier die Buchtipps, die sie erwähnt hat. Und ich hoffe, es war genauso wertvoll für dich wie für mich und wenn dir diese Podcast-Folge gefallen hat oder die zwei Folgen, dann bitte teile sie doch mit all den Frauen um dich herum und ja, ich wünsche dir einen schönen Tag, ich wünsche dir einen schönen Abend. Falls du übrigens Lust hast, mit auf Retreats zu gehen, das nächste auf Mallorca ist zwar ausgebucht, aber es folgen im Sommer noch einige mehr. Schau auch gerne auf meiner Website vorbei. Auch hier gehen wir in die Frauenarbeit hinein. Und ja, danke für dein Sein. Fühl dich geliebt und bis zur nächsten Woche. Namaste und sind Namen, deine Nadine. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your work, for everything. Thank you. Yeah.
beautiful to meet you. Your your angelic light. 